Welcome back. When I was working on the last video, I noticed on the ground as I moved to Fierro a puddle about like that. The smell test confirmed that it's E85, so the Fierro is out of commission until we figure out where that's coming from. Let's get it up on the lift, cycle the key a few times, which will activate the fuel pump, and see if we can conclusively determine where it's leaking. We're going to do that and a whole lot more next. Toys so I've been under here for about 20 minutes. I've cycled the key a few times and I'm not seeing any leaks anywhere. But when I look under the car here about where the leak was, I do see some minor evidence that fuel has run down from the top of the tank down the side of the space frame here and off the floor. So I'm not going to risk it guys. I'm going to go ahead and pull the tank. I don't know if the lines are coming loose from on top or if there's a leak up there or what, but it's time to drop the fuel tank. I don't have time to knock this out in one sitting, so I've got it put up on jack stands so I've got good clean access to get that tank out. And this way it can sit here a couple days while I whittle away at it. The first step is going to be to drain the fuel. Easiest way I found to do that is just to remove the return line and install this in its place right into a gas can. The gas tank's not terribly hard to get out. Here's the front strap that I gotta remove. This is more of like a structural support. It doesn't actually hold the gas tank. It has to come off. The back strap, you can see the tank. I had to cut and weld this up about a decade ago. That's where it was leaking from moisture being stuck between the strap and the tank. That has not leaked, which has been nice. Looks like it could use a little paint though. There are five hoses that go to the tank. The main one starting on the right hand side is the main filler tube. The next one over is the main vent tube so when you're filling up with gas air can quickly escape the tank. The three smaller tubes are the tank vent tube. The next one over is the supply tube to the fuel rail at about 52 pounds of pressure. And the final one is the return line from the rail at about a half a pound of pressure. But make no mistake, it can still spill a lot of fuel. This hose is a little tricky to find. Um, this is the original one. And when I take it off, I'm just really careful to slowly pry on both sides. And this one's lasted me and it's still in good shape, preventing me from having to try to source a new one. Same thing with the main vent tube when you're filling it. This is where the air goes out when the gas is going in. Just gently and carefully pry this off and hopefully you can salvage them. And then the last thing I wanted to point out right here is there's a ground wire for the fuel pump. That's part of the harness. And if that's not grounded properly, I've had issues in the past with either that or the fuel gauge or both. And I've got it running up pretty high in the vehicle and I ground it up by the deck lid hinge where it stays out of any sort of moisture and salt. I am seeing some signs that fuel was leaking down 
from up here down the side of the tank. These two, this is a, like a vent and a return hose. They typically don't leak because there's really no pressure. They seem to be good. I suspect maybe this is loosened up and occasionally a little bit of gas has kind of come through here and washed down the front of the tank, which makes sense. So I'm going to see if these things are loose. And I'm also going to pull out the fuel sending unit to check on the condition of that large O-ring. These are getting pretty old. And if that's got a crack in it, gas could definitely slosh out, I suppose. Now for the million dollar question. How loose are these clamps? They're a little loose. Definitely seem a little bit loose. I'm going to use some better clamps when I reinstall this. But let's get the clamps off and just see if that if that line spins freely then that probably means occasionally I was getting a little squirt out of there if this should this should be kind of stuck because it's been on there for like three or four years uh-huh I think that's what was leaking let's go ahead and pop off that fuel sending unit first I'm going to blow off any dirt or anything that might be in there Because obviously we don't want that in the gas tank. I always use a brass punch on here because it will never spark. And spark and gas tanks can be a problem. rubber o-ring is in fantastic shape. I'll give you a look inside here. Everybody says ethanol is gonna just kill your gas tank. Look inside there. Nice and clean. O-ring's in good shape. I am gonna pop this out though and check on that hose clamp because it's under pressure and uh, Put it back together. All right, we've got this all cleaned up and I've got a couple of the newer fuel injection style clamps on the pressure hose. Again, this is at like 52 pounds, give or take. One of these is a vent, the other one is a return. So these don't really get any pressure, maybe a pound. Um, these clamps are a lot better. I did put an old style worm clamp in the middle just for say, good measure, give you an idea. You can see the better style fuel injection hose clamp right here provides more of an even clamping force with that little uh, extra piece here. And here's your old worm style clamps which kind of are a coarse thread and for some reason with the newer ethanol rated hoses I've been finding they like to loosen up and that's a problem. These have been holding a lot better so I replaced them both here. Um, another thing, this is Gorilla Tape. I started using this about eight years ago and this stuff shares nothing in common with duct tape just so you know this is the wire for the fuel pump and i replaced the loom this is the part that's going to get exposed kind of near the exhaust manifold by the firewall so this was kind of brittle and dried out the wiring's in good shape but i replaced the loom to help protect it so let's go ahead and get this put back in the fiero So now it's just a matter of connecting the fuel line, the vent tube, and the return line, and we should be able to get this thing started again. Okay, I've got everything buttoned up under here. I like to use zip ties to hold things in place to make sure nothing's rubbing where it's going to cause a leak or anything like that. So now all we have left is let's put some fuel back in it, and we'll start it up and let it run for quite a while to check for any kind of leaks.
Well, guys, it's been a few hundred miles in a few days, and I'm confident that the Fiero is now fuel leak free. Now, my fuel line system could absolutely use some improvement, and in fact, I just ordered this part right here. This will attach to my fuel filter, and as you can see, the hard line has that little ridge towards the end, and that will help the fuel hose stay put in the event the clamps ever loosen up at some point in the future. The main point of this video, especially if you have a Pontiac Fiero, is you've got to be vigilant. Anytime you move your Fiero, you've got to take a look towards the ground and see if there's any signs of any fluid leak whatsoever. If it happens to be fuel, you've got to do something about that immediately. Failure to take it serious could result in this. One quick tip for you guys, if I could, I would highly recommend you keep a fire extinguisher in your Fiero. They're cheap, they're pretty effective, and my line of thinking is if you've got one, hopefully you'll never need it. That's going to do it for this one, guys. Please remember to share, like, and subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.